The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. The great privilege that has been bestowed upon us in this unique dispensation of the church age. Dear brethren, if you could lose this grace upon you, you will be the most miserable and wretched creatures of all time that could be looked upon throughout the eternity. Lord has perfectly planned us, given for us the phase one salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord has placed us in phase two so that we can understand what is after salvation our life. And to execute this phase two, Lord has called us to the praise of his glory when we can happily execute the protocol plan of God, the unique spiritual life, and attain to the spiritual resurrection in Christ. And even after our death or rapture, whichever could occur, the phase three, the ultima, the evaluation throne, and told us that you will be no more into the old sin nature, but in the resurrected body of Christ. And not only that, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has further witnessed to the point of fact that you and I as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be into a state of no more sorrow, no more anything which could really hurt us. But dear brethren, when Lord has been assuring for us so much of a truth that we will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more mourning, and everything could be to the crystallized clear of his happiness state, can you really have a conscience to think and to understand? Can you be happy in that state by failing to do and get Lord maximum glorification unto Him? How can we get our Lord a maximum glorification without the knowledge of Bible doctrine, without reaching the status quo of maximum glorification of Christ? We cannot get into it without without executing the three adult stages of this unique spiritual life, spiritual self-esteem followed by spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity, we cannot get, we cannot come, we cannot learn. We do know very well we are going to take us permanently in heaven. But this time, this life, what we are going through is of an ultima, dear brethren, whether you believe it or take it or consider it or not, do not waste this time, do not waste this life, do not waste this opportunity of grace. The availability of the divine power indwelling in us, the Trinity, Lord God the Father, Lord God the Son, and Lord God the Holy Spirit. The availability of the divine essence of royal priesthood and the work of royal ambassadorship representing God's word when we are being properly motivated through the knowledge and preparation of our Christ. Through the thorough preparation in his knowledge to execute the protocol plan of God. The availability not to grieve Lord God the Holy Spirit, not to sculpt Lord God the Holy Spirit, but to yield to the fruit of the Spirit by living in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit. So that we could be thoroughly qualified to stay and face unto the Lord, not to be ashamed that we have done your work, Lord. And we could tell in return, Lord, if it have been there, we would have done much more better. But since we had the old sin nature, we could fail some of our life wasting by mastering that old sin nature, not realizing what is the truth that you have given to us. Do you know what? When you are a child, you reason like a child. When you grow up, you reason like a mature man. And you will say, I was just like a childish and kiddies during that time to have differences with you. So better, I would realize now in a simple terms of love, the language of love. So I want to be with you happily. I don't want to have any differences now. Have we not found that instances in our life? Because of our jealousy, because of our bitterness, because of our old sin nature reigning upon us, have we not been out of fellowship with Lord God Almighty? Because for some simple fact known as pride, Absolutely, we have done it. And the ground that you have lost, because the old sin nature is controlling you, the time that you have lost, and having an indifference towards Bible doctrine, having an indifference towards the beliefs and the doctrinal tenets which the pastor is teaching to you. 
In fact, even if you could look into the cultish conditions of today's Christendom, there are not enough men who don't even have doctrine and tenets in their churches to tell that I follow such and such things. And Satan being cunning and with its cunning fables, it wants to obscure you and allure you from the word, from the truth. It is very cunning, it is very clever. It comes to such kind of point of realization for you to tell that, Lord, I was not aware about all these things. Lord, I thought only coming to the church weekly once, giving you offering monthly once was enough for me. No excuse for you at the judgment seat of Christ, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. Do you know why? Do you know why is not, there is no excuse? Because, Lord God, the Holy Spirit constantly indwells in you, and that's the availability of divine power. And there may be some men who have not been educated in the Greek or in the Hebrew, but in original languages at least that has been written, and that is the duty of a pastor teacher. A pastor cannot say that I have been excused because I don't know. And the congregation of that end, they may say, no, we don't know. We have not learned about this doctrine. No, a pastor teacher should teach to you. And who is that pastor teacher? That pastor teacher should have a bona fide gift from the head of the department. He is the only one who has that burden for you to inculcate this protocol plan of God. The burden for you will be inculcated by the pastor teacher who has been given this bona fide gift. He searches the scriptures diligently, then he will come to the point of realization to tell to you that this phase two is most important for us to execute the protocol plan of God and come back and look upon the unique spiritual life through spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity. He will not emphasize for you anything apart from that because your spiritual resurrection is the ultima. Your spiritual maturity is the goal of your life. No gimmicks, no tricks, no cheap methods of seeking in tongues or miracles or healings or XYZ. No, no tights, no woman preachers. And in our villages where we get along, the people may not say, Lord, we don't know this doctrine. You did not desire for the doctrine. That's why, Lord, you didn't send you. Your petition of prayer was waste. Your petition of prayer is for your selfish desires to be fulfilled. That's it. Your petition of prayer now qualifies you for the word of the Lord, dear brethren, whether you believe it, take it or not. Your petition of prayer has disqualified you. Because you ask all X, Y, Z things according to the selfish pattern, and you train them up. And know you not how much double judgment you are been facing at the judgment seat of Christ for a strictest, for a strictest judgment of all time. Believers at least will have an ESA with little strips. But the pastors who have failed, though they know the will of the Lord to communicate the word of the Lord as number one criteria in Second Peter 3.18, the dying declaration by Peter, Second Timothy 4.7, the dying declaration by Paul, in the final injunctions that he has given to Timothy, he tells, communicate, communicate, communicate the word. Because church is the manifold wisdom of God. The much variegated color of Lord has to be shown forth through the church. But what are we doing? Communicating only for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley so that our bellies could be satisfied. That is our communication today in the churches. That is our understanding today in the churches. That is the reality that we are noticing in the churches. Fear of fellow monasticism, fear of ecclesiastical displeasure, fear of your income that could be cut off. And itching ears, you want to tell them what the carnal sentiments and fleshy desires could be fulfilled rather than making them to endure in sound doctrine. Day by day inculcation, the outward man perishes, inward man has to be relieved. Day by day is the word there, it is not week by week or month by month. That's why this great truth has been not been made known among the church. That's why we, the church as believers, at this present era, write over the times and conditions which our Lord has given to you, the various epochs and seasons. You will be the most pitiable men of all time to be pitied, because you know why? You have not given number one criteria for Bible doctrine, that's why. You will be the most, most, most pitiable one of all time. Then the Old Testament saints, they will laugh at you at the judgment seat of Christ. Because you have lost 
the true essence and the integrity of the word of the Lord, the availability of the divine power, and you have even lost the true essence of your life because like a childish kid, you want to waste your time in useless and worthless speculations rather than concentrating upon Bible doctrine to be inculcated. After our death, what are you going to do? Again, you are going to come back to this heaven? Again, you are going to come back to the first heaven, that's what I meant to say to the earth? No, you cannot. There are some mythologies wherein the people say, yes, again he has been born. That's not possible. No way. The trends of satanic movement to diffuse you from doctrine is what they believe, the unbelievers. Dear brethren, you need to understand the truth. The truth for us is Bible doctrine. We cannot go against the truth. Nor we can come back again into this earth again. When we have been kaput out of this earth, either through rapture, ex anastasis, or by our physical death, which our Lord wants us, because Lord knows when is our time, how is our time, and where will be our death. But till that moment, are you faithful? Are you faithful to be the true disciple of Jehovah? Are you faithful to be a true follower of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Are you faithful enough to be under the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to train you up so that by not taking up the cross, you cannot become a disciple? That is what, by not taking up the burden. And have you been a true disciple of Jehovah to fulfill what has been told in Exodus 32 as well? Put upon a swat your thigh. And cut asunder, even if it is was your own brother, or your own family, or your own relative who worshipped that calf of a golden, golden real. And if it were not by the pleading of Moses, the entire Israelites would have been gone long back. That should not happen to you. If it was not by the pleading of Moses to tell, block my name from the book of the life, Lord, if you were supposed to delete all these people. Today, where is that man who can pray for God to stand up in the gap? Though they have been given the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not just endowment, but enlightenment, but enablement, and who permanently involves in you, where is the ministry for us? What is the work in us? What is the privilege in us? Have you given a source of power for that to work in you? We are not giving that source of power because we are always in negative volition towards Bible doctrine. That's why. That power source has become ineffective in our lives. Because no rebound. And even for rebound, you are not capable of keeping it straight. You want rebound with XYZ things included in it. Gimmicks. Cheap tricks. Ask them to raise hands, sign a card, walk an aisle. Ask them to sponsor a program. When the rebound is not straight, what can you have? The fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to learn to understand the availability of the divine power given to you in this church age, in this phase too. After rapture, what you will do again? Are you not when you are dead? You don't have work there at in heaven. No more sorrow, no more joy, no, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more cry. Have you not known? Why well, do you want to waste your life in useless and worthless things in this earth? I wish if God would give me a chance in heaven, I would make each and every believer who has failed to reach the maximum glorification of Christ in this church age to get down upon their knees and write the entire Bible if they would make a single mistake in the, in the vowel point of the Hebrew or even the single particle of the Greek, I would make them to write till they could make a point of realization what is the truth. Because the way they have defamed Lord's name on this earth, dishonored Lord's glory on this earth, the way they are telling themselves they are being pastors in this earth. And giving a pain to my Lord's heart. They should realize when they are kneeling down upon their knees and they are writing the doctrine, writing his word, rather than just enjoying in their mansions. I would cause them to write if Lord would give that permission. And if you would have failed to go to the attainment of the maximum glorification of Christ, 
in this church age, in this period, that will be the right punishment for you in the heaven. And Lord knows what he wants to do there with us. So dear brethren, this period of phase 2 is very great important because in phase 3 we don't have anything to be done except to regret and repent what you have lost in this church age. So which way you want to go, you decide in the next step. We shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was given to our fellowship with you through the word. May Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge. Sovereign Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.